Hello everyone and welcome back to my GM in WWE 2K24. We are here for the Fast Lane show and I'm um, gonna try to make a uh, work on this uh, use the three power cards in one week because uh, I'm running out of weeks to do that if that's something that I would like to uh, a bonus I would like to hit. Uh, so let's go ahead and do we'll be mean we'll do the limited stock and do that on nxt 2.0 because they hit me with a double cost card this week so i'll i'll pay them back uh is anyone on the verge of getting injured Ooh, these these two are um yeah so i might do the pre-match physio on piper so we'll do that, and then can I do a to the moon? You know what, sure, why not? A to the moon power card on Jackson Smooth. So we're gonna start building up Jackson Smooth to be, to be somebody on the roster. So that's now one of three, we did the thing. Um, I don't know if I'll need to really worry about any of these other ones. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, Nikki Cross might get hurt. Uh, that'd be unfortunate. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but yeah, opening match is the conclusion to the Carmelo Hayes and Damian Priest rivalry. That one's Falls Count Anywhere. Uh, Jey Uso doing advertising. Um, Zoe Stark is doing a training promo. EO doing a charity promo. And then Jimmy Uso is going to do a self promo. And I'm trying to drive up his value uh, before I trade him because um, I want to see if I can do uh, one of those two for one deals but like one that works out a bit better this time uh, so yeah there's the Piper Nikki cross match that one's not going to conclude a feud uh, Cruz del Toro and Dirty Dom will conclude a feud uh, not putting the title on the line though because I made a promise to Rey Mysterio um yeah, our current promises are that one and then Carmelo Hayes making an appearance, which he's here. Uh, Jackson Smooth taking on Chester. Uh, that's just a throwaway match. And then the main event is an Iron Man match. Omos and Rey Mysterio, that feud will conclude as well. So we have confirmed the booking for this one. And uh, I gotta showcase a match. Let's let's do the Carmelo Hayes and Damian Priest. Why not? So this match will pit one half of the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Damian Priest, up against the the rising star Carmelo Hayes. So no title, you know, no real big title matches on this show, unfortunately. Just just jockeying for position and trying to potentially, you know, superstars setting themselves up for future title matches, perhaps. As Carmelo Hayes just absolutely planted Damian Priest there, a brilliant display of ath athleticism by Carmelo Hayes. You know, that's definitely where he'll have the advantage over Damian Priest. Although Damian Priest is quite the force to be reckoned with as uh, himself. As Carmelo Hayes over the top rope takes out Damian Priest with the plancha there, and now lifting Damien Priest up and slamming him down with the Uranagi. And yes, it is false count anywhere. So uh, a, a legal pin attempt there. As Carmelo Hayes has grabbed a weapon from under the ring, a steel chair shot to the skull of Damien Priest. And then he just chucks it at him as well. Priest couldn't even get back to his feet. I'm honestly kind of surprised that they still have the chair headshots in the game since that's, you know... Not something they really do these days, for good reason, I think. Um, you know, not that I'm complaining. I feel like in the games it works well, as, you know, it's a very, very effective move. Uh, but yeah, no, don't don't need them doing that in real life anymore. I uh, think wrestlers get enough concussions as is. Um, but getting back on topic, Damien Priest kicks away Carmelo Hayes, and then just gonna toss him around at ringside. Getting away from the steel chair. Probably a good call. It's Damian Priest. The boot right under the chin. That'll knock Carmelo Hayes for a loop. Damian Priest now really going on the offensive. Sidewalk slam delivered out onto that concrete floor. 
and Damien Priest. Uh, nothing happened. <laughs> the game didn't like that one. As the backbreaker delivered, Carmelo Hayes tried to keep up to his feet, but it didn't really get him anywhere. And Damien Priest bouncing him headfirst off the apron. And now picking Carmelo Hayes up to his feet, but Carmelo Hayes with a counter, and he sends Damien Priest into the steel stairs. And he's got another steel chair. Is Damien Priest again going to get clocked with it? Carmelo Hayes is having very good... Oh, the super kick, though, by Damien Priest. Shuts that down. I was going to say that Carmelo Hayes was having very good fortune with that steel chair, but Damien Priest plants him. Here now, hook of the leg on the outside. The referee was over the barricade trying to stay out of the way of the action, I guess, but in very poor position to count that pinfall attempt there. And the match will continue. A very lucky break, perhaps, for Carmelo Hayes as he hits the reverse DDT. And now, you know, this is definitely an opportunity for Carmelo Hayes to uh, regain the advantage. You know, but I, I'm not confident that Damian Priest would have beat him there, but the referee being out of position... You know, one has to wonder. As I, I do like that they have the licensed referees in, in these games. You know, I know for a while WWE wasn't really uh, keen to, you know, give ha let their referees have names and likenesses that they'd have to, you know, well then, because you'd have to pay them. <laughs> so it is cool to see people in the game. Uh, Carmelo Hayes just broke that kendo stick over... Damien Priest, and Priest got busted open as well. So Damien Priest is really going through it in this match. Carmelo Hayes stumbling back to his feet, but Priest bought himself the opening. And while he dons the Crimson Mask, he's got Carmelo Hayes up on his shoulders, and the Razor's Edge delivered. He might have a different name for it, I don't know, but the cover to three Damien Priest. Pulls it out in the ninth inning there. It looked like he was in real trouble. But Damian Priest, you can see, wearing the wounds of this matchup. But he was victorious. Carmelo Hayes put up a very good fight, though. So, you know, you can't fault either superstar for their performance in that one. And so that match gets four and a half stars. It was a classic. The rivalry is concluded. And so now we will move on to bigger things. Jay Uso got a 17000 on the advertising promo, only at the cost of four popularity. So that's nothing too major. Jackson Smooth picks up the victory, and his ascension to the top of the blue brand begins now. Ooh, not a good training promo from Zoe. Only one ring XP. That's not great. Not what you want to see. Uh, Cruz del Toro and Dirty Dom, one-on-one -on -one in the mid card. And the win goes to Dirty Dom, and that also got four and a half stars and is another concluded feud. EO got us... Not quite 4,000 fans on the uh, charity promo. One, two, that's it. it's over. It's over. Nikki Cross is victorious over Piper Niven, and she did not get injured. So the feud will continue, and uh, neither of them got hurt. Uh, only two stars, though, which is fair. Damn, Jimmy Uso only went up one popularity on the self promo, so not doing a whole lot to raise his stock, unfortunately. And in the main event, Rey Mysterio puts away Omos in an Iron Man match. That match also got four and a half stars. So, you know, we had a pretty strong showing at at the at Fast Lane. The the in between matches were definitely duds, but we had the three concluded feuds, so I feel like that should carry us through. And in a three-star match, R-Truth wins the triple threat opener for ECW. Uh, Tamina only up one on the self-promo. Mid-card match between Blair Davenport and Indy Hartwell. And the win goes to Blair Davenport. One and a half stars. Shinsuke Nakamura. It happened. Jack and JD McDonough win the the tag team match against Seth Rollins and Josh Briggs, I believe that was. Yes, it says it says Briggs right there. Uh, Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey taking on the team of Wendy Chu and Tiffany Stratton. And it's a win for Rousey and Bliss, former rivals. Uh, I mean, they at least wrestled each other. I don't know about rivals, but... <laughs> 
I was out of the product for a few years. I don't know what's going on. And then main event, it's an Iron Man match between Karrion Cross and Joaquin Wilde. And Karrion Cross gets the win. Four stars, rivalry concludes, but we definitely outperformed ECW at the very least. Logan Paul retains the NXT North American Championship inside Hell in a Cell. Uh, the rivalry between Ivar and uh, Lorenzo concludes. Uh, Luke Gallows then going to call out Logan Paul after the match, so that feud is still building. And yeah, five-star opener, that's pretty big for NXT 2.0. Alba Fire picks up the win over Scarlet in a, a one-star dull match. Ilya Dragunov got them plus 5,250 fans on a charity promo. Iron Man match for the NXT title, Big E and Montez Ford. And Big E will retain the title. It got uh, four and a half stars on that one. Beth Phoenix is now in NXT. Got them another 5,250 fans on a charity promo. So, oh, and Miz is going to cut a charity promo too. Oh, I think NXT is going to get a, if they get that trophy, I feel like they probably have the lead in terms of fans. Fallon Henley gets the win over Raquel in a one and a half star match. The Miz got them 6,000 fans on a charity promo. So collectively, that's like... That's like 16,000 fans or something like that. <laughs> 17,000 maybe almost, 16,500. That might be the, the exact number, I don't know. Anyway, main event, Iron Man match. It's Becky Lynch and Bayley for the NXT Women's Championship and the win goes to Bayley. She is the new NXT Women's Champion. Match got four and a half stars. So the opener was actually the best match of the night, which makes sense. It was a Hell in a Cell match, uh, but yeah, big win for Bayley. The team of Eric and Baron Breaker get the win in a three and a half star match. The feud is concluded. I kind of forgot it was a feud, honestly. Chelsea Green advances the feud with Nikita Lyons, Triple Threat, Billy Slugger, Carmella, and the, the name I am still struggling to pronounce. And it was Billy Slugger who got the win and started a feud with Carmella. Okay. Candice LeRae could not replicate the success on the charity promo that NXT had, unfortunately, for WCW. Roxanne Perez picks up the win over Isla Dawn. The feud is now up to level three. Rhea Ripley only goes up one popularity on the self promo. Liv Morgan taken on Karen Compactor, but with a run in from Nikita Lyons. And it is a victory for Liv. I'm not really sure what they were hoping to accomplish there. And then the main event, Triple Threat, Tony D'Angelo, Finn Balor, and Randy Orton for the WCW United States Championship. And it's Tony D'Angelo that picks up the win. Finn Balor, he's out for three weeks. And that match got three and a half stars. So yeah, we were neck and neck with NXT 2.0. They just outperformed us in the opener. So like the charity promos on top of it, NXT 2.0 knocked it out of the knocked it out of the park. Um, WCW didn't do so great, and ECW also didn't do that great. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which would have outperformed the other. Um, so we got a rating score of 110 for plus 140,000 fans, big number. And we got some budget back as well. ECW 103 for plus 97, ooh, they're way below. NXT 2.0, Rating score 115 for plus 153,000. And uh, yeah, not quite as much added to their budget. And then WCW 102 plus 109,000. So yeah, uh, it was definitely NXT, SmackDown, WCW, ECW uh, for the performance on the uh, Fastlane show this week. ECW does not have any champions, <laughs> at least none of their main ones. I don't remember who their world champion was. I don't know if they jumped ship or got injured or left, but uh, it's just Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's just kind of hanging out on his own and in last place by by quite a bit. Um, although there is much more of a gap between WCW and NXT. 
And yeah, sure enough, if NXT can get a, a trophy, then they're going to have the lead over us. So uh, can hold on for dear life uh, for now. What do we have here? Cruz del Toro and 40,000 fan. Oh, okay. Liv Morgan's on a two-week contract. I'm like, there is no way that Liv Morgan is only worth that much. Yeah, but I have to give up 43,000 to make that happen. And it's not a lot of money, but then like I'll have to renegotiate Liv's contract and that will cost me more money. So I think I am going to decline. NXT 2.0 is offering Raquel in exchange for Cruz del Toro. Now, wait a minute. Why, why am I the one giving up cash here when it's like Raquel is worth... Oh, wait. No, yeah, I'm giving up way too much cash to get Raquel. I'm not sure I, I like that deal. I would... Uh, it could be okay if I tweaked it, but I'm not... I, no. It's a lot smaller, like a smaller amount of cash, but that's just not what I'm looking for. Uh, and then Seth freaking Rollins and Indy Hartwell for Cruz del Toro and 126,000 in cash. You know, that would be a two for one deal. That's a lot of money to give up though. Um, I think I'm gonna decline it and I'm just gonna do it my way. Oh, they want a little less in cash this time, but I'm still gonna decline it. I'd rather set it up myself. All right, so I'm gonna try to go for something pretty big here, uh, a, a, a two for three deal. Uh, we're gonna see, you know, Rey Mysterio, he's low on stamina. I drafted him by accident. He was another guy that I was considering, like could be a good option to, to trade away because like in terms of the his ring experience, he's maxed out, so he's gonna have one of the highest trade values at this point. And um, with Finn being injured as well, that might drop his trade value. So this feels like a good time, as good a time as any, if I wanna try to uh, bring the Judgment Day together. So I'm gonna see if this works. Cruz del Toro and Rey Mysterio adds up to about 399,000 in value. And doing the math, Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, and Candice LeRae collectively adds up to like uh, 429,000 or something to that effect. So I figure, you know, there's about a 30,000 difference. So if I double that and give 60,000 in cash, I feel like they might take that. I might need to give a little more in cash or figure something else out because Candice is their women's champion, but I figure it's worth a shot. No, it didn't work. Okay. So let's let's go big. Let's go 90,000. Damn. Okay. No Candace then. Um I thought But that's like that's really good value for 86 pop. I mean, granted, I guess her popularity will I hit the wrong button. <laughs> like I guess her popularity will drop when she drops the title. But um, I, th I thought like maybe we could swing it. So uh, let me try this again. Let me set this up. Rhea, oh, that's Finn. I just set Finn twice. Rhea, Finn. Um, yeah, Liv is only on a two week contract, unfortunately. Um, maybe if I took, like if I can't get Candace, then we're probably, I don't want Nikita Lyons really. I don't know anything about her. Uh, could go for like a car no Carmella's a higher value so that's not gonna happen um maybe maybe I lowball and go for like a Liv Morgan I will have to extend um you try and do the math in my head or skip ahead and do the math all right let's try this we'll do Liv Morgan a little bit of cash from WCW and I will send them, send them Cruz del Toro and Rey Mysterio. I've I'm, I've got three more trade attempts, so I can keep taking a shot at this if I want. Ah, come on, really? Okay, fine, don't give me any cash. This is still like a good deal for them, or at least it should be. I know that he's getting more uh, uh, frustrated, but there we go, made it happen. So two for three. Cruz del Toro, Rey Mysterio in exchange for Rhea Ripley, Finn Balor, and Liv Morgan. Uh, that's enough with WCW. I'm going to move on from that. 
Um, and I could still potentially shop around for Jimmy Uso. Um, I guess Omos is another one I could trade. He's pretty low on stamina, actually. Um, so with the new classes now, we have Finn, who's a fighter, who could potentially feud with a bruiser, which I don't think I really have yet. Um, although, I mean, like, classes also only matter so much, so, uh, I can, I can, uh, I don't have to stress too much about that. So, trying to piece something together, Zoe Stark is, is getting lower on morale, so trying to preempt her, potentially, if she wanted to try and jump ship. Um, Omos as well, I think, is someone I'm willing to shop around. So, collectively, that goes together for about 253,000. And then add together uh, Seth Rollins and Indy Hartwell, which Seth's value is surprisingly low. And his popularity is pretty low, too. But we're getting people with stamina, which I feel like is, is going to be good for really spicing things up and allowing me to book matches a little more freely. So together with Indy and Seth, that adds up to like 222,000, which I'm definitely va I'm definitely offering more. Um, I might even throw in another like 2,000 in cash just to see if that'll, you know, I'll go three, even us out to 270,000. Um, yeah, because 240 or 253. Yeah, I mean, I really hope this goes through. I'm definitely offering more value to them to make this happen, but it's my last trade, so I don't get another shot. Yes, let's go! We got two trades. And yeah, that definitely really, uh, uh, that really changes up our roster now going into Survivor Series and, you know, also going down the home stretch. Badvertising. Select an opposing brand who must use a tier one advertising logistic. Oh, that's fine. Vito Star, who gets blocked? Oh, Dom? Yeah, it's unfortunate. He is the most popular and he seems to have a habit of being the target of these block superstar or champion cards but like his his stamina is a little low anyway so i can work around that i just got a bunch of people with stamina it's fine uh last week's results came back we ended with a fan change of minus 1k uh let's keep that campaign running and see what happens nah i'm done i don't i don't want to mess with that can't have dominic you really crushed it with that last show game recognized game <laughs> All right, Paul. Uh, I was barely trying. Good luck keeping up, though. Uh, I have to give credit to the superstars, though. Yeah, I'm gonna credit my roster. They love us, Breeze. Don't you think it's time to take the next step? I'm talking about uh, better effect packages so that the talent can take the next step into superstardom. Sure, I'll do it. I know the, the arenas are more preferable, but I don't want Jimmy to get upset. Uh, I'm not feeling physically 100% right now. Um, is it okay if I take two weeks off? I'm okay with that because Finn is going to be out of action for a little bit yet. Dom is out for the week. So Judgment Day can take a week hiatus or a week or two hiatus. But uh, I mean, Rio will be here. Uh, I guess I... No, I have the health spa actually. So I'm going to do the health spa card. And we got our shakeups. Easy XP, select a superstar to gain 25 ring experience instantly. Um, pay yourself first, shows with GM interference grant a power card. Okay, find and replace. Superstars who win casket matches on your brand gain five additional. I think I'm just gonna do the first one. I feel like 25 ring XP is is pretty big. Um, who do I wanna pass that on to? With EO, uh, you know, EO's the women's champ and most popular available option. Um, or do I want to use it on a lower tier wrestler and try to lift them up? Uh, no, I think I'm going to go with EO because she's, she's pretty low for her position on the card, I think. So now we can run over to manage roster and EO gets a new perk. That put her, yeah, up to 15. So she can be a specialist bonus class or a fighter because all I can have are fighters, apparently. I forgot to look for bruisers. Um, you know, I'm gonna go specialist. 
it, it's not gonna it's not gonna match up super well with other classes but I, I like the versatility I think um, and then show logistics yeah it's just telling me that I have three what did I say I would do was it effects package yeah tier three effects are better how much does it cost a hundred thousand yeah but I could sign a contract with that money hmm well, I will decide that on the next episode of my GM. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you for the next one.